Back in 1985, Lionel co-wrote the definitive charity anthem, We Are the World, which became the uh, fastest selling U.S. single of all time, featured nearly every famous person with a pulse and raised millions of dollars in aid. It also raised a few questions from yours truly. Lionel, please indulge me. I, I need to uh, geek out on this song. Tell me your favorite memory of the writing process with Michael Jackson. Well, well, there's only one that comes to mind that scared me to absolute death was we were in Michael's room uh, trying to write the lyrics to the whole thing. And and I kept hearing this <sighs> sound. <sighs> and I kept thinking, what the heck is that? Well, to my right, by lying on the floor, I am eye to eye with his snake albino python. Ooh, bubbles? No, that was the monkey. This right. was not Bubbles. I yeah, was, no. I, Bubbles was right. right. And all I can tell you was, I was screaming like le, the last horror movie in Hollywood. Okay, <laughs> you understand me? And he kept, now here's the words that got me. He says, oh my God, Lionel, I found him. I knew he was in here somewhere. Oh no. But I haven't been, he lost a snake in his room for Don't the last two Don't do me weeks. that way. Right. You understand me? That's a memory while we were writing the lyrics. Who was the hardest artist to lock down um, for that? You had everyone there. Was there someone that you kept trying to get and then you were waiting and waiting to see if they'd show? Yeah, well, not so much waiting. We just kind of kept our fingers crossed. It was Bob Dylan. Bob, Bob is a sweetheart, but when Bob says, I'll be there, you have to say to yourself, okay, did he get the right day? Is it the right time? Is it gonna be there? Surprisingly enough, Bob was one of the first there on the wow. Set. So wow. So once we're, Bob walked in and Bruce, then it was we had shows. You were good. Were people able to request who that they wanted to share the mic with, or was that an assignment that you and Quincy Jones came up with, or how did that work? That was an assignment that the, it was Quincy and myself and two other wonderful people that I could see. Their names escaped me. Right. Their job was to remember everybody has a certain key they sing in. Yeah. So to make this actually really special is that their job was to go around and put the right key in the place where these guys can can sing it to their best. Uh, and I'm telling you, that was a day we had in my house trying to decide who was going to sing what part. And the part the part you have to remember is. With these things, everybody only had a half a line to sing. So you had to have an identifiable voice. Yes. And, you know, there were a lot of people who wound up didn't getting, not getting a solo uh, shot. Harry Belafonte, Bette Midler, Smokey Robinson, right. Right. on and on and on. Were any of those people pissed not to be getting <laughs> on the mic for a line? <laughs> no, actually, we kind of... No, it wasn't that kind of an attitude. Uh, I must admit, at that particular point, everybody kind of was was told ahead of time that you would have a solo part. We didn't we didn't surprise you when we got to the set. So so everyone knew that they had either a on camera live part or just going to be in the choir. Yeah, we um, we didn't surprise. You. Was anyone who did you see schmoozing or connecting that surprised you? Were there any people that? where you were like, wow, look at that. It's X and Y together. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think the, the, the most popular guy in the room was basically Ray Charles. Uh, you, you, uh, Billy Joel could not, he just, I mean, just be, to be that close to, to, uh, to Ray was just everything. Ray would pia play the piano and then Billy would play the piano and then Ray would play the piano. And that was a love affair that was happening that was just hilarious because he really idolized Ray. I could tell that right away. There was a rumor that Prince was supposed to be there, but he blew it off to go perform on Sunset Boulevard. Is that true? Prince was at Carlos and Charlie's. I'll tell you the absolute truth behind this now, since you want to really know the dirt. Um, and he said, I can come, but I want to record in a separate room. Mm. That was not what we wanted to hear. So the answer was, Hang up the phone. Uh, we'll see you later. And wow. that's where it happened. I wonder yeah, if he no, ever wanted, wound up regretting that when he saw, you know. I I wanted him so badly to be there, but you know, everyone had their own attitude at the time. Yeah. I'll say that in a nice way. And and so Prince and Michael and I were all friends, but the point was he wanted his in an isolated area, and we wanted to make this a united front yeah, for all. Yeah. So. Wow. Well, it's an incredible achievement that you pulled off. Thanks for watching. Watch more clips here, and subscribe to our channel here. See ya.